Hi, and welcome back. So let's dive in and look at the blood test results that I had taken on the 74th month of my longevity experiment. Let's quickly take a look at the supplements I was taking when I had this blood test done, and they have changed from the last time. NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, 1.5 grams per day. Trans resveratrol, one gram a day on non-training days, so that's Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. TMG, 1.5 grams a day, that's trimethylglycine. Metformin, 1,000 milligrams, that's two 500 milligram slow-release capsules, uh, and I take those just before I have my one meal of the day, somewhere between noon and 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units per day, 10,000 on a Sunday and a Wednesday. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms, that's the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams, the L3 and 8 version. Hyaluronic acid, high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, 400 milligrams a day of that. Quercetin, 2.4 grams per day on the first, second and third of each month. And Fisetin, 2.5 grams a day again on the first, second and third of each month. And if you want to know why I go for periodic dosing and not daily, there's a link in my supplement list in the description below. Dried parsley, I do try to take that as often as I can. It's not easy to get a hold of. One tablespoon when I've got it, that goes into my yogurt with my resveratrol. So it's activator, 800 milligrams per day. DIM, 600 milligrams per day. And that's now split into two 300 milligram doses, one in the morning when I get up and one uh, before I go to bed, sometime sort of between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Then we've got glycine, glynac, so that's glycine and NAC, 800 milligrams of that. Creatine, five milligrams, oh sorry, five grams a day and that's after the blood test and I take that then for three months. I stop one month before I get the blood test taken. Omega-3 fatty acids, 800 milligrams of EPA and 600 milligrams of DHA. And berberine, I was taking that along with my metformin. I was taking a gram a day and you may have noticed that my, you'll notice that in my last blood test it had dropped down to under the reference range. So this time I dropped it back down to 500 milligrams and we'll see in just a while what my uh, blood glucose levels are now that I'm on one gram of metformin and 500 milligrams of berberine. Let's jump straight into my lipid profile. You can see here, as normal, my total cholesterol is high, 274. My HDL is 57.79, which is well within the reference range. My LDL is 198.41, and that is high. Um, which I'm not bothered about, and I'll show you a clip in the video in just a second for the reason why. It's not the normal Sean Baker one, it's a different clip. Um, that's what drives up my total cholesterol. But you see that everything else that has to do with cholesterol is well within range. My triglycerides, 89, that's well under 150. My VLDL cholesterol is 17.80, well below the 40, which is the upper limit. Again, because my total cholesterol is high, my total cholesterol and my HDL ratio is within range, only just that said, 4.74 and upper, upper limit is 5. Then we've got my LDL HDL ratio, again more important than LDL on its own, mine is 3.43, um, well below the 3.5, that is the top end. And probably the most important one, um, as opposed to just LDL, is triglycerides and HDL ratio. Uh, mine is 17 to 10, and that's well below the upper limit of 2 to 1. So that's it for my blood lipid profile. I'm just now going to show you a short clip of someone talking to Joe Rogan about results of uh, cholesterol trials, saturated fat trials, etc., uh, and how those results were lost for some reason. So the government actually did a bunch of randomized controlled clinical trials on tens of thousands of people testing to see if saturated fat and cholesterol caused heart disease. So they actually took groups of people and they, they did this in mental hospitals where they totally controlled what people ate. And half the people they gave, you know, meat, butter, cheese, regular high saturated fat and cholesterol diet. And half the people they, you know, gave them soy filled cheese and margarine instead of butter and soy filled meat. And in those randomized, those rigorous experiments on tens of thousands of people, they could 
could not show that the people eating the meat and the butter and the cheese died at higher rates from heart disease. In fact, they showed in one of the most famous experiments called the Minnesota Coronary Survey on 9,000 men and women over four and a half years, they found the more the men lowered their cholesterol, the more likely they were to die of a heart attack. So what happened to all those experiments? They were not, that particular experiment wasn't published for 16 years. Other experiments I found sat in NIH, National Institute of Health basement, never published, ignored, not included, just ignored or suppressed. It's like out of a crime novel. <laughs> it's crazy. And so what was the American Heart Association doing? Ignoring all those clinical trials. So the American Heart Association is basically just uh, almost protecting their incorrect statements of the past. That's what they're doing, so, right. Let's now move on to my blood sugar scores you can see here that my a1c is 4.7 which is still low now the reason it dropped from 5.8 to 4.7 is that the 5.8 you can see there in october was just one gram of metformin um, on the 10th of march or the months leading up to the 10th of march i was taking one gram of metformin and one gram of berberine that dropped it from 5.8 to 4.7 which is nice because it's nowhere near the increased risk of diabetes range but it is actually low and low blood sugar does come with its own problems so seeing that i then dropped uh, the one gram of berberine down to 500 milligrams but it seems to have made no difference because it's still 4.7 which is which is low so um i'm going to carry on carry on do, doing doing that taking the 500 milligrams although i am toying with the idea of reducing metformin to 500 milligrams and going to one gram of berberine to see if that makes a difference. Uh, then my blood glucose scores you can see there is on the second row and that's the same 82.2. It says that between 90 and 120 is excellent control but it doesn't say if the 88 which is only two, um, two below the 90 is actually detrimental so uh, I may need to look up um, information on that particular subject. So that's it for my blood sugar scores. Moving on to my liver profile, you can see here that everything is in the blue. That said, my albumin globulin ratio here is in like a lilac color. That's because they changed the reference range. My globulin at some points during the experiment has gone high. Uh, for some reason, I don't know what it is because I haven't really changed anything. That seems to have righted itself, which is pretty good. So that's it for my liver profile no pre no real issues with that let's move on to my renal profile you can see here that my blood urea nitrogen my bun is still high that said 24 is registered as high because it's now 17 to 25 it used to be 22.60 uh, before they changed that then all of these would have been in the blue um, and because of that my bun um, serum and my creatine ratio are also above reference range and um, they are quite a bit above 29.9 the top end is 23 so i'll probably give this uh, another four months if these are still high or indeed getting worse or other things turn red then i think it's time to go and speak to the doctor so that's it for my renal profile moving on to my thyroid you can see here that it's lilac and blue so basically all in the blue uh, i don't think i've had any issues um, since that uh, low score there in uh, October of 2019 everything else has always been within range uh, depending on which measurement they were using so that's it for my thyroid vitamin D you can see here shot up quite a bit from 85.03 to 93.14 the sufficient range and this is, is always baffling because it is science it should have a, a specific uh, start and end point sufficient finishes at 80 but toxic doesn't start till 100 so is sufficient actually up to 100 or is it to 99 i'm not too sure that said i'd rather be at the higher end as long as i'm not over the 100 um, the 100 milligram score that's fine uh, i don't want to be in the toxic range you can be in the toxic range as long as it's not for a protract protracted length of time so 93.14 i'm quite happy with that for my vitamin d3 vitamin b12 this is shot up quite a lot from 645.3 to 1017.9 so that seems like quite a big jump and that said the upper range the top end of the standard reference range is 1600 so my 1017 is below that but that is the highest score i've ever had since i started taking 
these records back in October of 2019. So that's it for my vitamin B12. Let's move on to my testosterone. You can see here it's shot up quite a lot from 585 or 5.85 uh, all the way up to 914. And for an adult male, it should be somewhere between 86 and 788. So 914 is uh, above the reference range, which isn't an issue. But I think the reference range is far too broad. Uh, an adult male, so someone between the age of 18 and 80, uh, they've just got one bracket which says between 86 and 788 is okay. Under 300, um, for uh, all the people, you then become a nomination for testosterone replacement therapy. So I'm not too worried. It's 914. It may be because I had a blood test earlier in the morning. Next time I go, I may wake up slightly later and go and get the blood test later. But we'll see how that pans out the next time. But for now, 914, although it's high, I'm happy that it is higher. So that's it for testosterone. Moving on to my iron, you can see here that since June of 2024, up until March of 2025, mine was low. Um, I have started taking a iron supplement. I'm also trying to take as much parsley as I can. It's now 14.0, 14.0. The reference range is 19.5 to 19.9. So well above the 9.5, well out of the the danger zone, if you like, or the low iron levels. Uh, I'm happy with that. You can see here that my other iron markers, which is my TIBC, my UIBC, and also my ferritin, they're all within reference range. So I'm quite happy with the way that iron is going. C-reactive protein, you can see they've started to give an actual score now. So anything lower than 3.0 is good. Mine is now 1.6. Before they were just saying less than 5. So that could have been 4.9 uh, or could be like it is now 1.6 so I'm happy with C-reactive protein um, that's 1.6 well under 3.0 amylase up uh, sorry down from the 88 but anywhere between 28 and 100 is okay so the 77 uh, no issues with my lipid my amylase score moving on to lipase you can see here this has jumped up from 38 to 77 and 77 is the upper end of the reference range so 78 would have had me in the uh, would have had me in the out of the reference range at the far end so uh, happy where it is now we'll have to wait and see what it's like next time hopefully it's dropped down under 77 so that's it for my lipase score let's move on to my blood markers all of these apart from one are in the blue the one that's in the red uh, unfortunately is my red blood cell count um, 4.5 is the minimum, it's 4.3, uh, not a good score to get. We'll wait and see what happens in three months. Hopefully this is an outlier and it rectifies itself. If it hasn't, then it'll definitely be a visit to the doctors. Sometimes if you've got a, a low uh, red blood cell count, it can mean you've got some kind of infection. Then we've got the second set of blood test results. You can see here all of these are in the blue, so no issue. Uh, these ones that I try to get tested for some reason can't be checked in the clinic where I get my blood test and on the island that I live. And next we've got estradiol. You can see here down to 16.25 from 24.18. Not a problem because the lowest it can be is 7.63 and 42 is the upper range. So that's more or less in the middle. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'm also very happy that ever since I found out it was high and that's a problem for fat around the waist, low libido, etc., which I wasn't fatter on the waist I was getting, low libido, not so much, that since I've started to take the DIN, I've had my estrogen or estradiol uh, well within reference range, which is where I want to see it. So, and I've got DIN to thank for that. So that, that's it for my estradiol score. Moving on, let's look at my EGFR. Now you remember before, some of the markers were out of reference range and it said this could be down to liver or kidney issues. My liver stats were all okay. This EGFR is a kidney um, marker. You can see here it's up from 82 to 93, which is good because that before in October of last year was bad. Now it's 93. Anything more than 90 is classed as normal. So some markers are saying I've probably got some kind of kidney or liver issues, but the actual markers for those uh, kidneys, uh, kidney and liver are okay. So it's a bit, it's a bit puzzled. I'm not too sure why that is uh, the issue. Moving on to my urine, you can see here everything's okay apart from 
this one, which are my leukocytes, they were also out, if you like, in December of 2022. I'm not too sure what that was. It does say that if this number is out of reference range, it could be because you've got some kind of infection because leukocytes are a type of white blood cell. That says when you look what that say when you look back at my white blood cell count, that's 6.20, um, up from 5.28 last time. So there's not really any uh, issues with that. So um, not too sure what that is. I may have have had an infection. I may still have it. We'll see what it's like in another three months when I get the next set of uh, blood tests and urine samples tested. So that's it for my blood test results. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I think all in all, pretty good. A couple of markers seem to be out of range that lean towards me probably having some kind of infection. We'll see how those pan out in the next three or four months. Also, let me know in the comments below, why do you think my testosterone has shot up so quickly?